Eric Magidson here. Today we're going to calculate an amortization table for a home loan based on a down payment and figure out what our beginning balance is, monthly payment we're going to make each month, how much of each month's payment is going towards interest, how much is going towards principal to finally reduce my ending balance each month. So let's take a look at this. Total cost of the house is 255, but I'm going to put 14,000 down. So consequently, I'm going to take the 255 minus the 14,000 and figure out how much I'm going to borrow from the bank. In this case, $241,000 at four and a quarter percent interest for 30 years. 360 payments. So I want to calculate my monthly payment. I'm going to come up to the more button next to auto sum, more functions, and I've recently used the payment function so it's here. If not, I could certainly have typed it in here as PMT or simply payment. There's the payment function and of course it calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate. Now one of the real benefits of an amortization table is we can go in and make some what-if scenarios here, changing payments, making additional payments, and see what happens to the interest or how much sooner I can pay off my home. So. Our rate is four and a quarter. Since I'm gonna be making a monthly payment, I'm gonna divide that by 12. Remember, if we were making quarterly, we would divide it by four. If we were making uh, two payments a month, divide it by 24. If I was making two payments a year, divide it by six. Number of periods, in this case, 30 years times 12, or 360 months. My present value is how much I'm going to borrow, in this case, the 241,000. Because I want a positive value to work with to do the rest of my calculations, I'll put a negative right in front of the PV. And I can see that I'm gonna pay $1,185.58 a month. Let's figure out these depressing numbers here. So what's the total amount of the loan? Well, basically, it's gonna be my monthly payment times how many months I'm gonna make that payment. In this case, 30 years times 12. Now, again, why didn't I just put in 360? Because that would be a static value. <laughs> of course, 12 can be static here because we're doing monthly payments, okay? So let's figure out how much we're gonna pay for our $241,000 or $255,000 house. We're gonna end up paying 426,000 on a $241,000 loan. So the interest paid to the bank is simply the total amount of the loan minus how much I borrowed from the bank to find out that I'm paying $185,807.05 in interest. So let's go and figure out the beginning balance. Now, we're gonna need to use some absolute cell references in doing this. First of all, our beginning balance, of course, is going to change each month, so there's no absolute sell needed. Our beginning balance in this case, before we make any payment, is the amount we borrowed of $241,000. Our monthly payment we know is going to stay constant, so this is going to equal this number here, but again, it's an absolute sell reference, so I want to press F4 to say my monthly payment is absolutely always going to be whatever value is in B7. So my monthly interest. Remember that our interest rate here is four and a quarter percent, but that's our annual interest. We need to figure out the monthly interest. The monthly interest is calculated based on our beginning balance each month. That's how the interest goes down through the loan. So in this case, our monthly interest is going to be our beginning balance times our monthly interest rate. In this case, four and a quarter percent divided by 12. Now, do you see some things that are always going to stay constant? B12, we need that to move down as we iterate down, but certainly B4 is going to remain an absolute cell reference to absolutely always use the value in B4. So in this case, my interest for that month on the home, and I'm gonna format this in dollars, is $853.54. So of my payment, monthly payment minus my interest, of my monthly payment of 
Unfortunately, only 322 is going to go to the principal amount and reduce my balance. So my ending balance for the first month is going to be my beginning balance minus the principal amount. In this case, now I have a balance of $240,667. That, of course, the ending balance of one month becomes the beginning balance of the next. Now at this point, I'm ready to do some fills and fill some ranges. And if I did all the numbers correctly, at the end of my payments, I should have zero in the ending balance. So what I want to do is I want to highlight just the monthly payment, monthly interest, principal amount, and ending balance. And I want to fill down one time. Now notice the reason I didn't fill down this number is because it would fill down the 241 and I want the beginning balance to change each month. Now at this point, I'm going to go to month two or row 13. Now I'm going to highlight all five of the input cells, left click, fill down, all the way down to 360. I'm going to make these payments for 360 months. My balance is zero. So as you notice here, if we look at the interest, our interest goes down as our balance goes down based on how much we pay each month. And as the interest goes down, the principal goes up. So consequently, we're paying the loan off faster towards the end of the loan. This is done for a reason, folks. Banks know that most people don't stay in their houses and they want to collect a nice chunk of this interest at the beginning of the loan. So out of curiosity, let's leave these 360 payments and let's just see what happens if I was to able to take this monthly payment here and just add $100 a month to the payment that I'm supposed to make. So in this case, my value goes from 1185 to 1285. I'm going to fill this down all the way down to 360. And we'll take a look at by just paying an extra $100 a month, you can see we have negative values here, which means we've reached zero. Let's see how soon we reach zero. We would reach zero right here about the 309th month, which means 52. We cut 52 months over five years. Uh, I'm sorry, under five years, just, just under five years off of the loan. So five years worth of interest is what we cut off the loan. So what I wanted you to do is encourage you to go and play with an amortization table, ask those questions, what if, what if I could reduce my interest rate, refinance the house you know, in the fifth year? What if my interest rate went up in the fifth year? Maybe you wanna change that interest rate as of uh, you know, the 60th month or whatever. So play with it, hope this helps, and practice folks. Take care.